Detective for Hire. Jenny had saved up the whole <laughs> summer to place an ad in the local paper, but no one had answered it. Until now. What could this new case be? Her imagination ran wild, picturing the possibilities. And so, after helping her mum at Gumbolt College, she hurried to the pier at Lake Nowhere to rendezvous with her new client and crack another thrilling case. As Jenny neared the edge of the woods, she heard a sudden strange sound. What the? What the? Hey, kid! Watch where you're going! Hey, screw you! Your wrench nearly cracked my head open! Oh, no! It's not damaged, is it? That's my lucky wrench. Yeah, lucky it didn't kill me. When's this upgrade going to be finished anyway? Look, kid, I just go where they tell me. Every night, another power surge. Every morning, another part of the grid fry. And I'm out here fixing it. Do I get any thanks? No. What's causing all the outages? At the moment, a little red-headed girl. Now throw me my wrench, kid. Looks like I have all the leverage. Right? So tell me, what exactly is taking so long with these repairs? Apart from shoddy workmanship, that is. Hey, we're busting our butts to keep your lights on. These lines should be lasting for decades, but they're burning out after just a few weeks. It's the strangest thing. Anyway, toss me my wrench. But be careful. It's a family heirloom. Eh, yeah, fine. Fine. I've got bigger fish to fry. Apart from blatant health and safety violations, right? Thanks, kid. Wait, did I miss a thing? No. As Jenny stepped out of the dark forest, she saw warm sunlight reflecting off the cool lake. He's not wearing a helmet or a high-vis jacket, and I'm sure there's more, right? And next to that, something even cooler. <laughs> Keith Stroudsbury. <laughs> Come on, Keith! Dance like you've seen it! <laughs> not so much grinding! Oh, Keith, what are you doing? Not everyone saw it, but to Jenny, there was something special about Keith. He's just happy being himself. Nothing seemed to bother him. Not even having to dance in a costume for a dollar an hour. <laughs> but Jenny was not so laid back. Not when it comes to standing up for a friend. Especially her only friend. Dancing for one day, don't you? Hey, Jenny. Hello, Susan. Actually, I prefer Susie. Busy laughing while others earn a living, Susan? Not everyone's got your dad's money, I guess. Ooh, ouch! Jenny, hi! <laughs> Bench warmer gumbo moonbeams, with intense, best friend mysterious ever. eyes. Cool should have been his middle name instead of Tarquin. Tarquin. Quit a mouth for a nine year old, right? But Keith was so cool, <laughs> he didn't even mind. Give me one minute. I'm just finishing my. Sure. 
don't let me interrupt your work. My shift ends. <laughs> In 15 minutes, I know. I'm early. I'm meeting a client over at the dock. Paid case. Could be big. Real big. Couldn't be as big as her head. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's really... Impressive? Maybe. All I care about is keeping this town crime-free. <laughs> the only crime here is that haircut. Uh, excuse you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Back in a minute, Keith. I'll have the usual. Six sugars, a splash of milk, and a dash of cinnamon. You got it. How about now? Move it to the left a bit. What's he doing up there? Not now, kid. We're busy. Any better? No, keep going. <laughs> no. Yes, it's working. Hold it right there. That's what all the fuss is about. Not this guy again. What is that? Whatever it is, it's not my music. Maybe it's jazz? Shh. I'm trying to listen. What's he doing more ocean violations, right? <laughs> Shush. I'm the DJ. I'm in charge. When's this party getting started, boys? Oh, uh, just a few more minutes. Uh, how are we supposed to dance to this? I think we're losing them. Another station must be interfering with the signal. But there aren't any other stations in Arthurton. Wait! All these wires must be acting as a giant antenna! Jenny listened closely to the mysterious transmission. It was like no other radio broadcast she'd heard before. Hold it steady! Sorry, I'm trying! That's just getting worse. You might as well come down. It's a number station. No, wait! I can almost make out what they're saying. But just like that, the sound faded away. What did you do? That's no use. Come on. We gotta get this equipment back to the AV department by six. They're a real thing. Yeah, okay. I've never heard of it. Jenny was so lost in contemplation, she'd almost forgotten Mostly the case at Mostly a cold war thing, but they're real. Oh, okay. My client. We're supposed to meet her at the dock. Whoop. Danger. No swimming. Sounds safe. <laughs> Aha! Got you this time, you slippery fella! Ah, oh, shucks. Just another boot. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Humdrum. Oh my! If it isn't little Jenny LeClue. What a glorious day, don't you think? As far as Jenny was concerned, small talk was like a second pair of underpants. Uncomfortable <laughs> and completely unnecessary. <laughs> but mom always says create a good rapport and they'll reveal everything to you so she gave it a shot how's the fishing oh the fishing's great but the catching is bad all i'm getting are old boots and strange bits of metal but just look out there jenny she's got that wonderful afternoon glow <laughs> Feels a bit on the spectrum to me. <laughs> Maybe. No one knew why the lake glowed at night. And few were brave enough to swim its murky waters. What lay beneath its depths was the stuff of myth and legend. Somewhere out there lies the giant red herring, or so they say. But no one's ever caught one. Sounds fishy to me. Well, if she's out there... I'll catch her. Someday. Great. 
Well, now that we have a good rapport, where can I find Mrs. Humdrum? <laughs> well, she's down there on the ridge. Okay. Oh, if you're headed down there, there's a knack to getting the ladder to work. First you shake it, then you kick it, and then you push it. Sounds unnecessarily complicated. Complicated. <laughs> the giant red herring. <laughs> I know! <laughs> well, I'll join you down there in a bit. Just have to sort my tackle out. Did the trick. I did it right in the right order. Mrs. Humdrum, I presume? Oh, hello! Uh, you? I'm the private detective you contacted. The code word is purple. Panda. I'm here to solve your case. Who is it, Dan? It's Jenny, dear, the LeClue girl. She doesn't see so well without her glasses. Oh, hello, Jenny. I'm afraid I don't see so well without my glasses. Nothing wrong with her hearing, though. What did she say? I said there's nothing wrong with your hearing, dear. Oh, no, thank you. I've already eaten. <laughs> I believe you have a case for me? We do. We, we do. Great. So what's the trouble? Haunted by the ghost of a former lover? Worried you're being poisoned by a mad uncle? Something so dark and gruesome I can't even begin to imagine the horror? <laughs> <laughs> I probably want her to find their glasses. Well? I lost my reading glasses. Oh. And there it was, a real <laughs> case. I was right. A confounding mystery to challenge Jenny's brilliant mind. <sighs> I thought this was finally going to be a good one. <laughs> right? <laughs> what do you think, Jenny? Can you help? Sure, Mr. Humdrum. I'm gonna need to ask you a few questions. <laughs> Jenny had often snuck through the hole in the fence at Grubman's to watch the races. She could understand why the dogs ran so hard. They were chasing the promise of food. What the adults were chasing was less relatable. I notice you're a gambler, Mrs. Humdrum. You've been at the Greyhound races. That was yesterday. We always go to Grubman's on Wednesday. Dog racing, ew. I know. Interesting. I've never been interrogated before. This is such fun. <laughs> Do you often carry a pair of binoculars? She doesn't go anywhere without them. I presume you don't wear your glasses when you use the binoculars. No, I can't get my eyes close enough to the eye cups. Hmm, I see. Did you take your binoculars with you to the races? Of course. Those critters are so tiny, I can't keep up without my binoculars. Interesting. You really are very good. The best. How long have you been solving mysteries, but... I'll ask the questions, thank you.
Sticker! Looks freshly blow dried. A professional job. Your hair looks lovely today, Mrs. Humdrum. Is that a new style? Thank you. I had it done yesterday. Dan didn't notice. <laughs> they call it the Queen's Quaff. Well, it's certainly big. And expensive. It's in her hair. But I'm worth it, Dan. Her Look glasses are in her hair. That beautiful head of hair. You're not so bad yourself, hot stuff. Dan is sleeping on the couch tonight, right? Gross. What's next? Fingerprints? Oh, polygraph test? It's like you're reading my mind. I expect you're finding it difficult to paint without your glasses. Oh no, I never wear them when I paint. I like to feel the canvas, to interpret the colors. She's an incredible painter, you should have her paint you. Thanks, but I don't mix business with pleasure. Have you figured <laughs> it out yet? The suspense is killing me. How many clues have I got left? Two more, okay. Jenny recognized the distinctive indentations left behind by a pair of spectacles. She must have been wearing them recently. You still have marks from your glasses on the bridge of your nose. You probably lost them within the last day or two. Oh, I never would have thought of that. When do you last remember wearing them? I'm really not sure. Damn? You had them at your Tuesday book club. Oh, yes. We're reading Fifty Shady Graves. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny, but it is. <laughs> I feel like you know more about me than I do. <laughs> okay. Canvas isn't anything. Nothing on her shoes. Hey, I found something. That's a large hole. She must have caught it on something. Did you have trouble climbing down the ladder, Mrs. Humdrum? Her hands seem too clean to be painting. This is true. Why, yes, I did. How on earth did you know? <clears throat> There's a tear in your pants pocket. Well, what do you know? I didn't realize these pants even had pockets. You are so thorough. Any more questions? I think I have everything I need to wrap this one up. Where are Gail's glasses? Okay. 
There's a big hole in her pocket, but Gail didn't even know her pants had pockets. So it's unlikely that she would keep her glasses in them. Okay. Nope. That's not what I meant. Let me try that again. Pretty good. Yeah, I'm guessing Gail it's in her hair too. <clears throat> she had to remove her glasses to use the binoculars. I could Gail be eating cupcakes. It's fluffy and big and could easily hide a small object. <laughs> yep, I was right there in her hair. Solving a complex mystery like the case of the missing glasses was tough work. <laughs> but now came the most satisfying part. Delivering the dramatic denouement. <laughs> Let's review the facts. One, not only do you love your binoculars, you've come to depend on them for bird watching, greyhound watching, Basically, anything far away watching. That's true. I immediately sense the two optical devices, your binoculars and glasses, were incompatible. Thus, to use one, you had to remove the other. Fascinating. Fact two. Yesterday, you changed your hairstyle. I did. Though fun, it was also impractical. And so tall that it could easily conceal a small object. I see where this is going. Please, don't interrupt. After much research, deliberation, and debate, I've concluded there is only one place the missing glasses could be. They've been on your head the whole time. Oh, so they are. Right there on top of my head. Incredible. What a talent. They're always in the last place you look, aren't they? A master detective in the making. What would we have done without you? <clears throat> Gail, don't forget to pay the girl. Oh, of course, silly me. You must be rewarded generously for all your hard work. Now don't spend it all in one place. <laughs> Did she get a quarter? I'll do my best. <laughs> One dollar. <laughs> I think she got a quarter or a nickel or something like that. <laughs> Are you ready, Keith? Wow, what an amazing detective. Glasses on her head. Hmm, who could have guessed? Oh, you heard. Whatever would we do without Master Investigator Jenny LeClue? Who asked you, bitch? I thought it was pretty cool, Jenny. And a whole nickel. You must be so excited. A nickel, all the even worse. Yeah, that's more than her mom makes in a month. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. Can I smack these just... bitches? Hey, Jenny, my grandma called. She wants her sweater back. <laughs> oh, how wonderful it was to joke around with friends. These are not friends, these are bitches. <laughs> I've had enough of this. be really mean. Over application of makeup. Hair drawn over face. Wear sunglasses even at night. You're trying to distract from something. A lazy eye, perhaps? What? No! How do you... Shut up, Jenny! You don't know anything! Wow, Jenny. That was cruel. Who even says something like that? 
Aw, don't cry, Veronica. She's just a weirdo nobody! Jenny, let who? And... and the case of the missing... friends! <laughs> uh, yeah. Good one, Veronica. Come on, let's get you home. Hey, I was- I could have been Susie? worse. Thanks for the coffee, Kate. And the extra sugar. Of course. It's- Nothing special at all, and the same thing he does for everyone. Oh, okay. See you around, Keith. Well, that went well. Shall we? Uh, yeah. I've got no customers now, anyway. <laughs> Nothing exciting ever happens here. I'm so tired of these simple cases. to become a real detective if there are no real crimes to solve. You up that old lady? <clears throat> Darn. Thanks, Keith. But it was stupid, and everyone knew it. Including your girlfriend. She's not my... And you really mustn't let them treat you like that. You should stick up for yourself. Uh-huh. They don't mean anything. Sometimes you just gotta speak up and say how you feel. Well, I... You can't just let people walk all over you, Keith. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter anyway. Nothing's gonna change. Not in this ghost town. <clears throat> it's not so bad. Don't you ever wonder what it would be like to live somewhere else? Sounds to me like Keith likes Jenny. Oh, um, not really. I think he's a little old for her, though. <laughs> Who am I kidding? There is nowhere else. Not for miles. <clears throat> oh, shucks. See, practice is going well. Is your dad still pressuring you to play? Well... Come on, Keith. You hate basketball. And tough love, but you're the worst player on the team. Not the worst. Well, on the bench, anyway. Why don't you just tell him you don't want to play anymore? It's... a Strawberry tradition. That's my point, Keith. This whole town is dead. Stuck in the past. Everyone is just doing what they're told without questioning why. Where's the ambition? The sense of adventure? Are we still talking about basketball? <laughs> <laughs> How's your mom? <clears throat> she seems... distracted. Normally, she's so focused on her job. I mean, it's understandable. It's been almost a year since... And now she's planning to go away for the weekend. And she still won't tell me why. Yeah? Oh, I think he knows something. She was definitely acting weird earlier. Maybe she's... lonely? You know what? You're right. I am? She shouldn't be alone right now. Actually, your dad told me they were meeting in the library. We're going to need supplies. Two of Mr. Bean's finest, please. To go, of course. Here is my payment in full. That's a nickel. Put the rest on my tab? Thanks for the pep talk, Keith. You always know what to say to make me feel better. I stole. <laughs> you want it? You take it. You need to practice. Here goes nothing. <clears throat> Three pointer. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Keith. Maybe your luck's finally changing.
Something weird's going on.